maybe there wasn't a lot of point or value in me backing it into that spot other than I don't have the opportunity to reverse that often and since there's pretty much no one around I thought I would practice even though this spot is huge After 17 miles of washboard forest road, it's time to play one of my favorite games, which is guess how jacked up the inside of the trailer is. On a scale of no problem at all to things are broken, what's your guess? Let's see. secure the mattress otherwise it'll fall off the bed and then it allows me to secure a couple other things with it so only a few minutes of cleanup not so bad and nothing's broken so I'm pretty happy because that was quite an extensive drive down narrow forest roads Some of you may be questioning, Lex, I thought you said you weren't masochistic enough to camp in cold weather. Isn't it cold up by the Grand Canyon at this time of year? And the answer to that is, it's kind of chilly. It might be cold enough to discourage some people, but it's, I'm from Wisconsin. It's not cold enough to discourage me. My rule of thumb is once my frostbitten fingers are no longer able to have sensation, then it's time to go. It's too cold. But the daytime highs are in the 50s and the lows at night are still hovering just above freezing. So while it has made it so that there's pretty much no one around, it's not cold enough to scare me away yet. Now the second question some of you that have been up in this area to disperse camp or to visit the Grand Canyon might be asking, Lex, why would you take 17 miles of back forest roads to get to a camp spot that you could have taken Highway 64 up through by the south gate entrance of the Grand Canyon around and then you would have only had to drive two miles of forest roads in order to get to this spot. Why, why would you drive like that? And to that answer, it really was just for the adventure of driving on the forest roads. It also allowed me to see that really there's no one here. There, I, I only passed three other campers and I wasn't just avoiding the toll booth. I have an America the Beautiful Pass. So while it would have been probably a much smoother and more pleasant drive to just take Highway 64 around, I couldn't have seen a herd of elk run by. I couldn't have gauged how many other campers were here. And I couldn't have had the adventure. The third question you may be asking is, you can't bring Riot into the National Park, why would you go? And to that I answer, ah, I'm only going to go to a couple overlooks for that very reason. As much as I would love to hike the National Park, you're right, I just don't do things without Riot. However, there is a really awesome hiking trail that begins right over there at the beginning of this dispersed camping area that I do plan on taking and I will show you why. I 
don't know if it'll pick up on the GoPro, but you can begin to see the Grand Canyon right over there. Jesus, I should have just crawled under it. So as you can see, right within the dispersed camping area, there is a trail that with a little effort, you can have views of the Grand Canyon and of Mount Vishnu without ever actually entering the national park. Now, considering I have in America the beautiful pass and we are so close, I would be a fool not to go check out the Grand Canyon for myself since I have yet to be there. So to end today's video, here are some shots of the absolute majesty of the Grand Canyon. And I highly recommend visiting this area in the off season as the overlooks were nearly empty and it's the beginning of the weekend. So I was very pleased to have some time alone viewing the canyons. Now before we go into those views, can you guess where I'm going next? Thanks so much for watching. If you did get anything out of today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, and following us for our next adventure in dispersed camping in a off-grid cargo trailer camper conversion. I, I, I tried. We're too close to Grand Canyon National Park. The app will not allow me to take off. So no drone footage, even though we're, eh, we're like two miles into the forest from the National Park, so I suppose I understand. I've been a little hesitant to fly the drone the last few days. Even in the last video, I was kind of cutting it close because there's been some really high winds and I'm still very novice at it, but I will do my best to get some drone footage for the next one.